So here what I've done is I've got about a tablespoon of equal parts garlic, oregano, and paprika, smoked paprika. Um, and then I've got about a half tablespoon of pepper, which I'm going to add to my mixture. And I've got some salt. You don't want to over salt this, but you also want to keep in mind that liberal salt creates a more flavorful dish. So this is, I don't know, about a, a quarter tablespoon of salt. Now this will be ready to be rubbed onto my dry bird. For now that I have my dry ingredients done, I want to go ahead and start with my other ingredients, which will be added on top and inside of the bird. This is fresh rosemary from our garden. And the best way to strip rosemary, it grows like this. This is the, the, the base here. So what I want to do is I want to strip it going, the, going towards the base. A really wonderful flavor, of course, is garlic. A lot of people don't like handling fresh garlic, even though it provides you with the best flavor because of what is commonly referred to as the paper. So to deal with this paper, just give it one solid whack with the blunt side of your knife. We're going to use these fresh ingredients um, on the outside and underneath the skin of our bird. Garlic is one of those flavors that will turn sweet uh, once it's, uh, especially if it's been roasted. I can just do this roughly. You want to make sure that you keep your fingers out of the way of the knife, obviously. Give that a rough chop as well. It's a little bit stickier, it's harder to get through. But the reason for this is it's going to allow more of the oil to come out, which is really where the flavor is. I did collect these lemons, which rolled away from me. The key to zesting, you can use just a regular grater. Um, there's obviously our regular shredding size, which a lot of size side, which a lot of people use for cheese. Same thing here, and then there's this little micro side. Um, it's wonderful for zesting. It's a great tool. If you don't have a zester, if you do have a zester, that's, that's fine too. The key is to get as much of the peel and as little of the white part beneath. That white part has a tendency to have a bitter flavor, but I happen to have these wonderful lemons from our yard, which come in so handy. As you can see, I'm just rotating this along that fine side. These lemons can later be used in water or iced tea or in any other kinds of recipes. If you're going to be making a stock, you can use them for that. Don't forget that a lot of the zest tends to get caught on the inside of the grater. So what I've done is I've washed the chicken, I've patted the inside dry, I'm going to continue to dry the outside of the bird. The purpose of this is that I want a nice crispy skin. In order to get crispy skin, you want your bird to be as dry as possible. Where I am going to add moisture is I added the lemon juice and a little bit of water just to coat the bottom of the pan. Now it's time to fist this bird. I like to take off my wedding ring before I do anything like that. I'm gonna go ahead and dry rub it. Some people don't advise dry rubbing. 
Some people like to use olive oil of paprika, oregano, garlic powder, salt, and pepper that I prepared earlier. You're going to notice I have the breast side up first. I'm going to try and bring these wings in nice and tight, but I am going to flip this bird later. I'm going to take my garlic that I prepared earlier and I'm going to actually lift the skin up and massage it up and under the skin. And what this is going to do is it's going to infuse the meat It's also going to help the breast maintain moisture. I'm going to do the same thing for the thighs. I'm going to do the same thing with my lemon, my zest. I'm also going to move this lemon zest onto the outside of the bird to help flavor the skin itself. I'm going to use my leftover lemons, whichever has the most pulp still remaining. I'm going to put one half inside the bird. I'm going to use my remaining rosemary stems and leaves and put this directly inside the bird. What this is going to do, it's going to permeate the meat as it roasts and it's going to steam it from inside the cloaca. I'm going to put this inside the oven at 450 degrees, breast side up for 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. As you can see, it's already wonderfully browned. I'm going to turn the temperature down to 350 degrees. I'm going to flip the bird. The easiest way is to get a pronged barbecue fork like this. As you can hear, it's already quite crispy. I'm just going to gently rotate it. I've just got the same type of mixture from before. Equal parts oregano, garlic powder, paprika, a little bit of salt and pepper. I have the oven turned down to 350 degrees. I'm going to loosely tint this with some aluminum foil. And I'm going to put it back into the oven for, for between 40 minutes and 60 minutes, depending on your oven temperature and altitude and the size of your bird. The last 10 minutes of the roasting process, I turned the oven up to 375 degrees and I removed the aluminum foil tent, the aluminum foil tent. I'm going to remove the chicken from the oven. It's very important that during the cooking process you keep the bottom of the pan moist. So I periodically would check on this and add in some water. The best way to check the temperature is of course to use a meat thermometer. And you want to insert it into the deepest part of the thigh but without touching the bone. And we need this to come up to 165 degrees. So our chicken is complete. Um, right now it is very important that we make sure to rest the chicken. It's typically a good idea to rest the chicken for 20 minutes before carving. The purpose is for the, those juices to get sealed in. If we were to carve in right now, we would see the juices run out of the chicken. We do want to make sure that our chicken is fully cooked. Another way would be to go ahead and cut into the chicken and make sure that the juices are running clear. 
the drawback to that method is that you do lose moisture out of the bird.